Okay, let's talk about pericarditis. It's inflammation of the pericardium because itis, inflammation, pericardium, pericard, right? Okay, medical terminology just lets you in on that little secret, which is awesome. Um, pericarditis can be in um, a primary disorder or it can be secondary to something else going on within the patient's body, right? So we get to investigate and see what is going on with this person so we can figure out you know, if, is this caused by something else that we need to treat or is it coming on its own and then we just need to figure it out and fix it, right? So the cells um, become really inflamed within the pericardium and fluid leaks into that interstitial space. Whenever you hear that word interstitial, that means within the cell layers, okay? That space that's in between where the heart is, the heart muscle, and then the sac that surrounds it. Fluid accumulates in there, and that is what is called cardiac tamponade, okay? You need to remember what cardiac tamponade is because we're going to talk about this, and it's a very serious thing, but a bunch of fluid accumulates in that space, and it starts pressing in on the heart muscle, okay? So visualize that. If fluid is inside that sac and it's pushing on the heart muscle, do you think the heart's going to expand and contract like it needs to? Mm -mm. because that fluid is pressing on it and so that poor heart is trying to beat it's going to cause discomfort it's going to cause low cardiac output and a lot of other issues so remember this cardiac out uh, cardiac tamponade okay um, all right yeah if it's not fixed eventually the patient could end up having heart failure and then the patient would eventually worst case scenario end up dying from this pericarditis though as you'll see as we keep talking about it it can be fixed pretty easily and, and typically you know we can recognize it and get it treated and it doesn't have to be something super serious okay but it can be if we don't treat it so the signs and symptoms of it like we said there's a typical inflammatory response because those cells are inflamed they're going to end up having um, a fever and just general malaise they do not feel well okay and these patients will tell you that I just don't feel well they'll be short of breath have this heavy feeling in their chest. A lot of them come in and we initially are going to think, ooh, are they having a heart attack? Is there something more serious going on here? And we have to rule that out, of course. But they'll have precordial pain, okay? And that's just talking about pain, precordial, right? Up in the chest, over the heart, okay? So it's over the heart, precordial, all right? So whenever they move or they breathe or, you know, anything like that, it's going to increase the pain that they're experiencing because as they're moving that's increasing first of all the demands for the workload of the heart second of all I mean it's just moving around right that, that would hurt when you think when you take a deep breath your chest expands and that's going to put more compression on the heart also whenever somebody is having a heart attack there's really nothing that's going to relieve the pain okay whether they sit up or adjust or change positions or lie down or anything they are always going to be in pain but when somebody has pericarditis, if they sit straight up and kind of lean forward a little bit, that's going to ease the pain for them. So that is going to be our first clue that we're ruling out a myocardial infarction or a heart attack. Okay? Does this make sense to you? Pericarditis is not a heart attack. It just sometimes mimics in its signs and symptoms what a heart attack would feel like. They say, oh, it hurts over my heart in my chest, you know, it's got pressure, it feels like something's sitting on it, I'm having trouble breathing, I have a fever, maybe they're a little cold and clammy, they just don't feel good, okay? But when they sit up and lean forward, oh, pain feels a little bit better. The reason why it does feel better is because it's taking some of that pressure off of the heart because when they lean forward and sit up straight, it's taking the pressure of the chest wall off of the heart and relieving some of the compression around it. Okay, so it's not an MI, ruling it out by positioning them. Um, what you're going to hear when you listen to the person's heart is a pericardial friction rub. And remember, we talked about that sounding like squeaky leather or pleather, like ah, 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 that really annoying sound, right, when you rub leather together. Um, you also might notice some muffled heart sounds just from the fluid that's accumulated around it because hearing through air is going to be a lot clearer than hearing through fluid, right? And they've got that fluid accumulation, so it's going to be a lot denser of a sound, and those sounds might be muffled. They're going to have some hypotension just from that low cardiac output, a weak pulse, again, low cardiac output, which is going to leave them feeling very fatigued. This is just a picture of what's going on in this patient as well. 
So some diagnostic tests we can get to just figure out what's going on with the patient. We're going to draw some cardiac enzymes, right? Because anytime somebody's got these, um, you know, heaviness in their chest and pain in their chest and everything, we want to draw those cardiac enzymes and just see what's going on. We will see an elevated ST segment, which when we get into talking about the EKGs, you'll know more about what that means. Um, but the cardiac isoenzyme levels are relatively normal. So even though they have kind of an abnormal ST segment on their EKG, their cardiac isoenzyme levels with their cardiac enzymes, they're pretty normal. So we're thinking not a heart attack, right? First of all, we positioned them and they felt better. Second of all, we draw the cardiac enzyme and they're normal. Um, on a chest x-ray, the heart is going to appear enlarged. Um, first of all, there's that fluid accumulation. The heart's really trying hard to work. It's going to be bigger. On an echocardiogram, we're going to see a wide space. It's going to visualize the structures for us. We're going to see a wide space between the pericardium and epicardium, suggesting that there's some kind of fluid that's filled up in there. They are going to have an elevated white blood cell count and an elevated ESR, which is erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which tells us a cat just knocked over a chair in my home. Sorry. Um, but that's going to tell us that there's some general inflammation somewhere in the body. Okay. So, I'm sorry, I'm laughing about that. That's really kind of crazy. So there is some, some kind of inflammation in the body. We've got to figure out where it's coming from. But going along with the other signs and symptoms of the heaviness in the chest, the readjustment, the isoenzyme levels being ignored, the normal, the muffled heart sounds, the squeaky leather pleather sound with the per, uh, pericardial friction rub, we're thinking that inflammation is in the heart, right? Right. Okay, so to treat this, we've got to rule out the MI. Um, we need to treat the underlying cause. So if this was caused by some other kind of infection or inflammation somewhere else in the body, then we need to fix that, and then that will subsequently fix the pericarditis. We're going to tell them to rest, to take pain medications, um, some antipyretics like Tylenol, NSAIDs, um, and corticosteroids just to help reduce that inflammation. We might need to do a pericardiocentesis, and that is where they in, um, insert a needle directly into the pericardial, that interstitial space in the pericardium, okay? That needle will go directly in and will suck out that extra fluid that's in there creepy, right? But it works because it takes out that fluid and we reduce the compression that's on the heart muscle. Um, they might leave a drain in place if it's a lot of fluid and they weren't able to get it with just a large syringe um, and also just to make sure that we're draining anything excess that is in there. As a nurse, we've got to make sure that we figure out the nature and incidence of pain and what worsens or relieves it because, I mean, that is going to determine it a lot for us. With a myocardial infarction or heart attack, that pain is not going to get any better. With pericarditis, it does if we reposition the patient, and that tells us a ton about what is going on with this person. Okay, so our assessments are vital in this situation. We want to assess for the pericardial friction rub by listening. Okay, while they hold their breath, um, the pericardial friction rub um, does not go away um, when the client holds their breath. Okay, and that's going to tell us that it's not just rubbing, 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 rubbing. Okay, when they hold their breath, their heart is still going to have that squeaky leather sound as the heart continues to try to beat. Okay, um, we want to assess for cardiac tamponade, which is that fluid filling around the heart, right, inside the pericardial sac. Um, we're going to have a decreased cardiac output, those muffled heart sounds, which will then probably end up in that some kind of heart failure to back up, back up, back up into maybe jugular vein distension if we've got right-sided heart failure where it's backing up into the body. Um, they might have a cough if they've got left-sided heart failure where the blood is backing up, backing up into the lungs, right? So they might have a cough, some dyspnea, maybe some fainting, anxiety. Heck yeah, they've got anxiety. I would too if I was experiencing this. So be sensitive. Assess your, um, assess your patient thoroughly and be compassionate and understanding. All right. We're going to talk about peripheral um, the blood vessel inflammatory disorders in a minute.